Since June 2019, the anti-extradition movement has evolved from a request against the extradition bill to a summer of freedom with five demands and eventually to a battle against communism as Beijing imposed the national security law on Hong Kong. Whether in the Legislative Council, often referred to as LegCo, or on the street, Hong Kongers often saw legislator Roy Kwong Chun Yu standing with them at the front line and speaking up for them to the police and government. Quote, with tears in her eyes, our fighting spirit is still up. Kwong uses this lyric he wrote to share with Hong Kongers, facing hardships do not give up and choose to stick with kindness. The lyric was used in a famous song, Promised by Lejko, which talks about the promise among the Hong Kong protesters to meet again by the Lejko complex in Admiralty, take off the gas masks, and recognize each other. After the One Million March on June 9, 2019, Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam pushed to proceed with the second read of the extradition bill. On the evening of June 11, many Hong Kongers, among whom many Christians, hoped to rally near the Leg Co to sing prayers overnight. The riot police stopped and searched them and even asked citizens to line up like criminals. Kuang mediated dozens of conflicts throughout that night. Many passed by the Admiralty subway station. They didn't do anything, but were stopped and searched by the police. Some were even asked to line up and questioned like criminals. Back then, the frontline police were still receptive to mediations. I took a copy of the police general orders and asked the police to stop people only with reasonable doubt. Kwong described the night as magical in that Hong Kongers were not deterred. On June 12, tens of thousands surrounded the Legislative Council and stalled the second read of the extradition bill. Kwong stood on a fence and shouted, No injury, no bleeding, no arrests to Hong Kongers. His photo was published on French media and he became one of the first members of what Hong Kongers call the International Front. Stretched through many sleepless nights, Kwong passed out. When recalling this, he is grateful to the volunteer first aid for his treatment. I'm not an Iron Man, as my neck still needs regular follow-up. The doctor was unhappy that I was late for my follow-up. On the evening of Mother's Day, I was arrested. Police kneeled onto his neck. As to him returning to office on the same day, he said, I couldn't leave the Legislative Council, Lechko, that day, because Long Kuan Yun, president of Lechko, may resume the Lechko session at any time. We have to stick to our posts. He said that the police's abuse of power on June 12 was only a prelude. We experienced so much later, there is no need to list them all here. From the summer of 2019 to today in 2020, I believe the Hong Kongers who have come through this will not forget it in their lifetime. Hong Kongers' unified resistance stalled the second read of the extradition bill, but Carrie Lam's comment of the bill is dead was obviously not putting protesters at ease. Some Hong Kong protesters were arrested under rioting, and this has upset many. Marco Lung Ying Kit was one of them. On June 15, Lung became the first person who died for the movement. Lung died after falling from the scaffolding outside Pacific Place Mall, where he hung a banner that became the prototype of the five demands. Kwong was there and tried to talk to Lung directly, but the police disallowed it. He yelled to Lung, Come down, let's march together tomorrow, but the voice couldn't travel to the scaffolding platform. Everyone knows that I didn't join the 2 million march on June 16th. That day I went to the suburb, stared at a river for an entire afternoon, and I only sent a few reply text messages to friends' greetings. The pressure was huge and very heavy. I came back to my office that night. That night, Kwong passed Pacific Place on his way back to the office. When he saw everyone supporting and encouraging each other, he understood that even though it was hard, he must carry on. I think for a lot of Hong Kongers, everyone works hard and plays his or her own role. We should periodically organize such memories and reflect, why are we holding up? Over the past year, some protesters have died, some are being prosecuted, some are being detained, some have been forced to leave Hong Kong. Kwong says that Hong Kongers should always keep them in mind and support them. No one would have imagined this 10 years ago, that some Hong Kongers will have to move away, leave Hong Kong, not because they don't like this place, conversely because they love this place too much, but had to leave. We should keep this in mind and know that support is very important. Speaking of support, Kwong has been visiting those in detention or attended court sessions to support the protesters. 
The most important is to be able to help them. There's also something interesting, that as we go through suffering together, no one blames others, there are no complaints, and they even encourage me back. I think this is the spirit of the older generation of Hong Kongers, or even two generations back. We've gone through the golden times in which we took care of each other and trusted each other. After that, people became more distant and often commented on the lack of support in the city. This movement woke up Hong Kongers. As to those who had to leave Hong Kong, Kwong says that no matter how far they are away physically, their hearts are still close. Kwong said Hong Kongers' wish has always been humble, from the extradition bill to today's national security law. What Hong Kongers want is to protect a very important value, freedom. What they have done lives up to their era. I hope everyone's safe, even though this wish has become a luxury. I will continue making my best efforts. The Hong Kong government has designated September 6th as the voting day of the Legislative Council elections, which indicates that the regime still believes that the majority of the population is supportive of the government. Kwong says that the LegCo election still feels too far away. I really don't have time to think about this. As an elected legislator, what I have done is my fundamental duty. With their best efforts, whether it's mediation at the front line or criticizing Carrie Lam's government in the LegCo or the support of the citizens. Although I have been busy, I will continue to handle well the present business. If there's a choice to go back in time, which timing would Kwong pick? There's no what if in history, but if there is a choice, of course, back to June 9th. If all the misery in the past year had not happened, of course, it would be the best. But when misery truly happens, we should choose kindness, insist on it, and march on. Think about how we can make it better, the place where we grew up. I have confidence in Hong Kongers, and I put my hope in each and every one of them.